Hello there, very good Tuesday evening and welcome to Primetime News. We are coming to you live and direct this evening from our news for studios in Colombo. I'm Joel Outskoon. Well, on one of our top headline stories this evening, Minister of Transport and Civil Aviation Nimal Siripal de Silva says the Palali Airport will not be given to India for development purposes. Well, that is one headline, but we have many more for you. Let's take a look. Development of Palali Airport to state-owned Airport Authority of India. MPs received strict warning from the Speaker. Accusations of murder conspiracy stirs Parliament. Minister supporting the 20th Amendment bribed an expose by Sarat Veera Sekara. Inspector Neomar Rangajiva and Prisons Commissioner Emil Ranjan further remanded. And now let's move on to those stories in detail. The Times of India reported that the state-owned Airport Authority of India will develop the Palali Airport in Sri Lanka. An agreement was signed by the Executive Director of Land Management and Business Development of the State-Owned Airports Authority, Anil Gupta, and the Joint Secretary of the Ministry of External Affairs, Sanjay Pandey. The article reported the authority will prepare a detailed project report for the development of the airport. The report added the AAI has developed more than 60 airports in metros and non-metros in India and now wants to leverage its expertise in other countries on a bigger scale. The Times of India said the agreement was reached based on a request made by the Northern Province to develop the airport. The paper article added that this will give the people living in the Northern Province direct connectivity with South India, Malaysia and Thailand. It goes on to note that India has proposed to develop the Kankasanthuri and Matala airports as well. Will Palali Airport in Jaffna be another Matala airport? Well, let's shift our attention to news from Parliament now. The Speaker of Parliament, Karu Jayasuriya, commends the parliamentary proceedings today with a stern warning to all parliamentarians. Let's take a look. I must note, you the MPs are very much aware that a massive amount is being spent on a single parliamentary sitting. It is unfortunate to note the lack of quorum had led to situations where Parliament could not function at crucial moments. I wish to stress it is the constitutional duty of all MPs from the government and the opposition to ensure that there is quorum. I request such unfortunate situations be averted. As per the standing orders, when oral questions are raised, the minister should be in parliament when it is raised at least on the third occasion. If the minister is not present, the non-cabinet minister or the deputy must provide a response to that question. I also request for the questions to be posed on time to be answered. <laughs> Well, the United National Party was defeated in the local government elections while in power. Later, the Rwan Vijay Bodhane Committee was appointed to present proposals to divert the party back to the path towards victory. Were steps taken to implement the recommendations put forward by the committee? News First takes a closer look. The report was put forward by the 17-member committee headed by State Minister of Defence, Rwan Vijay Bodhane. The following are the recommendations presented in March 2018 at the Temple Trees. The first recommendation presented by the committee was that the party constitution should be more democratic. The report went on to say that an election for the party leadership should be allowed through the party constitution after a presidential election or a general election concludes. Another main recommendation presented through the report was to appoint more efficient leaders to the posts of chairman of the party, general secretary, national coordinator and other senior posts of the party. It further recommends that a strong restructuring needs to take place and the leadership of the party should be appointed while respecting the mandate of the people. Another recommendation was to empower the deputy leader of the party through the party constitution to build up the support for the party by going around the country. It was recommended that any member of the United National Party should be allowed to directly coordinate with the post of party general secretary and to appoint a MP who is currently in Parliament. That MP would come in through the national list at a future election as per the report's recommendations. We requested that the Ruan Vijay Vardhana Committee report be enacted and for talented young leaders to be appointed to the senior positions in the party. We are all of the same stance. We need the restructuring. 
Yes, the Prime Minister agreed to it. In addition to that, he agreed to change the constitution of the party in a manner that it suits the present time, taking into consideration the grassroots level politics. I presented the recommendations that all the positions in the party should be decided after a vote based on the likes and the dislikes of the working committee. He pointed out the requirements to amend the party constitution for that purpose. We believe that it will be done. If it comes to a place where leaders are appointed through other means, we will not remain silent and we will have to make political decisions. Though the backbenchers of the party spoke in this manner, they too are silent at present. Then the United National Party leader, Anil Vikram Singh, whenever there is a crisis, he comes out and what he does is appoint a committee. Now we saw in the central bank bond the Pitipana Commission that was appointed. What happened? Nothing. Right throughout this leadership, commissions and committees are appointed, but nothing has up to today come out of these commissions. Then when it came to the leadership crisis in the United National Party, he again appointed Ruan Vijay was in a committee. The Ruan Vijay was in a committee also gave their recommendation. What happened to that? Nothing. Then you saw the um, uh, no confidence against the Prime Minister. We saw the young MP shouting, screaming, coming out from temple trees like Rajavaru, like kings they were walking. And they come up to the uh, gate of uh, temple trees and say, we are not giving up our struggle. We will anyhow ensure that the leadership has a change. We will do that and only turn back. But time and again we saw all the young MPs been looked after so well that they have made up their mind to allow Mr. Vikrama Singh to continue till 2030 as the leader of the UNP. Although there were several good recommendations in the Vijay Wardana Committee report, what transpired was Minister Akhila Viraj being appointed as the General Secretary of the UNP. It was decided that the post of Party General Secretary, the Treasurer, should be appointed full-time through the Constitution Amendment that was done in 2000. I recall Garmini Atukorla was the Party General Secretary back in the day. There was a requirement from the party as well as the leader to appoint the General Secretary as a full-time position. It was decided that he or she who is appointed will not hold political positions. It was changed in 2000 because Rani Vikramasinghe took a decision that this will not be given to a parliamentarian. With the 2004 general election and when there were struggles from within the party against Prime Minister Rani Vikram Singh, it was decided to make certain changes in the party positions. That change was came where Goda being appointed as the General Secretary instead of Mr. Senrat Kapukotua. A new Deputy General Secretary position was created. I was appointed as the first Deputy Secretary. I was handed over the political activities because the full-time General Secretary was someone who did not engage in political activities. There were struggles from within the party again by 2006. Those arose because there was an opinion that the General Secretary should engage in political activities. I became the full-time General Secretary of the party in 2006. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe, through the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, attempted to grab the power of the President as well. And now we have some financial information. It is our sad duty to report that the exchange rate has further depreciated. As of today, the rate is 166.64 to the dollar. Indeed a sad situation there with the depreciation coming into play. Moving on with some more stories. Now, former Prisons Commissioner Emil Ranjan Lamaheva and IP Nyomal Rangujiva from the Police Narcotic Bureau, who were arrested over the killing of 27 inmates and prisoners during the 2012 Balikata Prison Riot, were further remanded until the 2nd of October. The case on the 2012 Balikata Prison Riots was taken up before the Colombo Additional Magistrate Priyanta Leonage today. The CID informed court that the government analyst's report on the firearms and ammunition said to have been used in the killings during the prison riots is yet to be received. 
Tell them that the drug dealers banded together to put me in prison. There are around 60 cases relating to hundreds of kilos of drugs. A false report was produced and I was put in remand prison. Tell the president to look at our plight as well. We have not committed murder. We are not terrorists. We did not loot banks. We are government servants who worked for the country. Nobody is looking into our issues. Please tell this to the president. Ask a representative to come speak to us. We will prove our innocence. These are false reports. What is your channel? We'll see if Hero will air this. An international school was declared open today in Sitankani, Jaffna, to commemorate the 154th birthday of the late Anagar Kadatmapala. This school is named as Paton Ho International School. This school, managed by the Yoshida Sokanji Preschool, was built upon the funds from a group headed by Mr. Pat John Ho from Korea. The chairman of the Sri Lanka Mahabodhi Association, Venerable Banagalopati Satera, the Minister of Education in the Tamil Nadu District, K.A. Senkothian, and the State Minister of Education in the Tamil Nadu District, V. Radha Krishna, and the Commanding Officer of Jaffna, Major General Darshan Ahetiarachi, graced this occasion. The intaking of students into the school was done by the State Minister of Education of Tamil Nadu, V. Radha Krishna. Afterwards, steps were taken to open an eye hospital in Sittan Karni. Though you have a lot of money, you won't reach up to reach up to that level. Most important thing is education. You have to have very good, very strong foundation. That is why I have introduced Japanese education system to Sri Lanka 39 years before. A donation of 5,000 books were made to the public library of Jaffna by the Indian delegation. Well, in some news from the parliamentary complex, tensions erupted in the parliamentary chambers today over accusations made regarding an assassination plot. The information I have is quite serious. If the president is murdered, he will not become the president, Honorable Speaker. The Prime Minister will have to be the acting president until the next president is appointed. Is this a political shift of power or a conspiracy? This must be looked into and steps must be taken against this conspiracy. The situation is such that this is considered very likely. His statement is a disturbance to the investigation. He is trying to obstruct the investigations. The investigations launched by the Criminal Investigations Department on the 14th, 9, 2018 are continuing. Facts are reported to the Fort Magistrate Court on the 17th, 9, 2018. The video and audio recordings have not yet been received. Deputy Inspector General Nalaka Silva has been transferred to the Police Information Technology Unit. The situation is so serious that the DIG should be arrested and investigated. Disciplinary action can be taken by the Police Commission. We will conduct the initial investigation and present a report to the Police Commission. The police will conduct an impartial inquiry into the issue. There is no question about that. The president is the first citizen of the country. Security divisions are taking necessary action to ensure his safety. Even though the other individual isn't a citizen of the country, we will give him the necessary protection. The Inspector General of Police just a short while ago had taken Nalaka Silva to the temple for a religious offering. Ask the Minister of Buddhasasana about that. I don't know. A sniper weapon had gone missing from the Terrorist Investigation Division. There is a need to look into whether this is true. Please submit that in writing. For an investigation to be conducted, there is no issue. A statement was recorded from an officer named Namal for 10 hours yesterday. There is an attempt to hide him, to send him overseas. Please provide him with police protection. If the relevant individual is requesting for protection according to the complaint, we are ready to provide security. A similar accusation was leveled at the former central bank governor, but after the accusations were made, his passport wasn't even barred. At the time, we requested that his passport be barred and an investigation be held. We will inform the relevant individuals regarding that. The Prime Minister is in the chamber. During any other debate, he jumps up and entertains us with jokes. Can the Prime Minister give an answer now? I have spoken about the law. I thank them on the interest that they have shown regarding our President. When he became the presidential candidate and his security was being removed, who here spoke regarding that? Did you not feel the pain then? As I came to Sri Lanka, I asked the Inspector General to look into this. The President has asked for a report on the steps that should be taken after the inquiry. Until then, if Gota Bay Rajapaksa thinks that there is a threat to his life, he can request for protection. 
Honorable Speaker, the Deputy Inspector General connected to this incident should be suspended and arrested. Also, Honorable Speaker, we as members of Parliament are not satisfied with the conduct of the Inspector General of Police. Well, Dr. Jayampati Vikramaratna says he will support the 20th Amendment to the Constitution put forward by the Janata Vimukti Parabuna. He made this statement during a media briefing held at the party headquarters. We are appearing on behalf of the new constitution. If this is not happening or being delayed, we will have to look for options. That is why we decided to support the 20th Amendment put forward by the JVP. If this becomes successful, Mahindra Rajapaksa might be able to become the Prime Minister and take over power. That is also possible. What are the so-called constitutional experts constantly trying to say? What about the public money wasted on appointing various new committees and the parliamentary sessions to draft a new constitution? Dr. Jayampati Vikramaratna, who mentioned various factors such as the executive presidency and delegation of power, is now saying that the 20th Amendment presented by the JVP is better. What made them take so long to finally declare that this is better? Why were so much public money and time wasted? People's opinion is that the 20th Amendment to the Constitution is not presented with the intention of fulfilling the requirements of the people. TNA MP M. A. Sumantiran, who has been involved in these proceedings with Dr. Jayampati Vikramaratna, is also at the forefront. What did they finally do after leading the 19th Amendment to the Constitution? Isn't it to create a Prime Minister who will not be easily removed from the system by slashing the powers of the President? Aren't those who are attempting to increase the powers of an individual who wasn't liked by the majority now attempting to vest him with executive powers? The most surprising fact is that the constitutional experts of President Maitri Palasiri Sena, such as Minister, President's Council, Faisal Mustafa, were also part of the group that created the 19th Amendment. This is not the first time the government was accused of exposing one aspect to the general public, another to the judiciary, and another aspect to Parliament. It is an open secret that such initiatives were led by the so-called constitutional experts. Whose contract have they undertaken to deceive the citizens of this country and engage in such acts? It is time we remind the constitutional experts that the people are wise. They are the ones who are behind the JVP supporting to submit this act. We heard that every MP who supports will be awarded with 300 million rupees. 300 million rupees is close to 2 million US dollars. We clearly state that these individuals are the ones who betray the country by obtaining the 300 million rupees. Well, I would like to focus your attention onto a top story of uh, tonight's bulletin. Well, at the start of the bulletin, we mentioned that the Times of India had reported that the state-owned airports authority of India will now develop the Palali Airport in Sri Lanka. However, onto a very trending story and also a story which made to the headlines, onto a response which we would call Minister of Transport and Civil Aviation Nimal Siripala de Silva says the Palali Airport will not be given to India for development purposes. Now, the minister made this statement in parliament responding to the article published by the Times of India, stating that the state-owned airport authority of India will develop this airport. There is no idea to hand over the Palali airport to any other country or India, even for development purposes. We presented a cabinet paper on this. Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe, myself and John Amaratunga presented this cabinet paper. It said the Palali airport should be developed by the Air Force. We provided 750 million required for this purpose through the aviation fund. Minister John Amaratunga said he will grant the other 1,000 million from the tourist fund. The development will take place under the Air Force. It has no connection to any other country or to a company. I state this as the subject minister. And in news from courts this evening, the petition filed under contempt of court against Northern Province Chief Minister C.B. Vigneswaran and Northern Province Ministers Anandi Sasitharan and P. Sivanesan was postponed to the 16th of October for further deliberations. Now, on the 29th of June, the appeal court issued an interim injunction restraining Northern Province Chief Minister C.B. Vigneswaran from removing Provincial Minister of Transport and Fisheries B. Devineswaran from his post and this order was extended to the 9th of October. A petition was filed claiming that not abiding by the court ruling was considered as contempt of court and 
recording reasons on the matter was taken up before Justices Kumudini Vikramasinghe and Janaka De Silva. President's Counsel S. Kanageswaran appearing for the Chief Minister said his client had already filed an appeal with the Supreme Court against the interim injunction order and therefore complaint on contempt of court cannot be legally taken up at the Court of Appeal. Northern Province Chief Minister C. V. Vigneswaran and Northern Province Ministers Anandi Sasitharan and P. C. Vigneswaran, who are listed as respondents, were present at the Court of Appeal today. Moving on, Deputy Minister of Industry and Commerce Buddhi Gapathirana attended the 9th South Asia Sichuan Business Promotion Roundtable Conference today. Yesterday, the 2018 Chengdu Dialogue on South Asia Production Capacity Cooperation opened in China and this conference is taking place in line with the main event. I firmly believe that forum of this nature would create a more opportunities to promote greater cross-border investments, facilitate an expansion of South Asian export, export in the Chinese market also serve as a channel for South Asia. China South Asia economic integration. Potential for trade expansion between China and SARC is enormous. We have to continue our effort tirelessly to enhance the volume and vol uh, value of trade between us. Well, on to a very sad story this evening. Now, four elephants were killed in a train collision this morning. What's more saddening is that among the dead elephants was an unborn 18 month old calf. The accident took place at around 4 a.m. this morning in the area between Palugasweva and Galloya in the Puakpitiya area. The train collided with the four elephants while they were standing on the rail track, resulting in the derailment of the train and the spillage of two crude oil barrels. The Operation and Control Center of the Railways Department stated the train services to Batiklo were hindered due to this accident. The train service from Fort to Batiklo has been limited to Mahavatta, while the train service from Batiklo to Fort has been limited to Galloya. According to our correspondent, this area has been identified as an elephant pass when commuting from Hurulu Eco Park to Timbukulama National Park. <laughs> Meanwhile, we also witnessed a group of people who had come to collect the oil that was flowing from the damaged oil tanks. Investigations into the death of these elephants were conducted this evening. During an inquiry, Wildlife Director General MGC Surya Bandara stated that 4% of total elephant deaths are due to train accidents. According to him, during the recent past, nearly 10 elephants died from train accidents, while nearly 150 elephant deaths have been reported during the past few months on the first of last month seven on the first of last month seven dead elephants who had drowned in a mud hole in the periaru river in the somavithia national park of polonarwa were discovered director general of wildlife department says the ministry has not provided a data on a project that was initiated to prevent elephant deaths due to train accidents and therefore the project cannot be implemented Appoint a wildlife officer at night. Officers are only appointed for passenger trains and not for trains that transport fuel. Elephants cannot identify whether the train is transporting passengers or petrol. It is one of these trains that knocks down the elephant. During these two weeks, nearly 20 elephants have been killed. There are nearly 10 to 12 places like this that pose such danger. We have to protect wild elephants. There are some strings, some strange reasons. Uh, but people have been do not seem to like to have lasting solution. The steps which have been taken so far uh, are not useful because a concerted effort, a very scientific approach has not been actually applied. Uh, the government, the successive government seems to know only about, only about this whole conflict, is about uh, building electric sensors. But wildlife and uh, wildlife department has a responsibility, big responsibility. Uh, uh, rather, than, rather than just thinking as they have been thinking all this time, they have to think out of the box and go and look at the rest of the world because there are other countries who have found very good solutions to this. 
in Kenya with its population of 15,300 elephants, this is how elephants are kept at bay. The Kenyans use an effective methodology to tackle the problem. The Kenyan system includes the use of large rocks, making it difficult for the soft soles of the elephants to handle. There is no need to pay expensive foreign consultants and incur tremendous costs on committees. News First is happy to supply this feedback on a free of charge basis and as usual done in the overriding national interest. Moving on to more news, Professor G.L. Perry spoke about the details that are revealed regarding the assassination plot on the president. It has been 72 hours since the information came out. The only step taken by the government is to transfer this person to the IT division within the police itself. That is the only step. This is surprising. Then the question arises, do they want to know the truth or whether there will be problems if you know the truth? If there are problems, is it better to sweep this under the carpet? Who is the force behind this? Why are they not taking any steps? Is the person being transferred from one division to the other sufficient? Why are they behaving like this? We think that it is the duty of the government to provide an answer to the people. A silent vigil was held at the Independent Square in Colombo in support of Mohammed Kamar Nilar Nizamdin who has been detained on charges of alleged connection to terrorism offences in Sydney. Family members gathered today at the Independent Square and held a silent vigil seeking immediate justice for him. The parents and family members have stated that they are unable to contact their son who has been imprisoned. They are requesting the authorities to hold an extensive and accurate investigation on this matter. Kamarunal Nizamdain was arrested on the 30th of August on alleged charges of terrorism. In sports, well, Sri Lanka ODI skipper Angelo Mathems has apologized to cricket fans for the defeats that the Sri Lankan team faced at the hands of Bangladesh and Afghanistan. The losses knocked out the team from the Asia Cup 2018. Well, the complete cut of Angelo Mathems as to his sorrows being expressed to all Sri Lankans on this tragic defeat and much more of the story follows on our award-winning website that is www.newsfirst.lk. On that note, we wrap the news. Thank you for stopping by. I'm Joel Altskoon. Good night.